in this example, what I want to do is evaluate it two different ways using both of the definitions that I gave you. Our goal is to find the derivative of f at 3. So what, what this notation means, we would read it f prime of 3. Um, we want to know the slope of this function when x equals 3. All right, so the derivative tells us that we're finding a slope, and then this 3 here tells us that we want to know it at 3. So the, the first way we're going to do it is the way we just did. We're going to find the derivative first using that limit definition. So the limit, I'm going to use h approaching 0. So the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so we're going to use x cubed as our function here. So we're going to put the x plus h in for x there. Um, and we get x plus h cubed minus x cubed all over h. And we're still taking a limit, so don't forget that. Limit as h approaches 0. And anybody know off the top of their head what the expansion of x plus h squared or x plus h cubed is? x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus 3. Yeah. Yep. Uh, h cubed. Binomial expansion theorem. That too. Okay. Kind of leaked over into the next line here. I'm going to slide it over. Um, so leave that x cubed off at the end. This, oh, I need an x h cubed here. Thanks. Um, so this right here is the expansion of x plus h cubed. Um, and then we subtract f of x, which is x cubed here. And that is all over h. And then just like the x squared, we're going to have things cancel. Um, and this is always going to happen. We're going to have the x cubes cancel here. With a polynomial, it's usually pretty straightforward. Although if we get higher than a degree of 3, you can imagine this gets pretty complicated. Um, and then once those cancel, we have h's in every term in the numerator. So we can uh, cancel those out, knowing that h is never actually going to equal 0 when we take this limit. And so this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0. Notice that I have parentheses here. Those parentheses are important. They're especially important here because if I left them off, then the h's here would not approach 0. It would just be the h's in this first term. And there are no h's in this first term, so it would be kind of silly. Um, and then what's going to happen here when h approaches 0? These two terms here are going to approach 0, right? And so what we have left is 3x squared. Now, that is not our answer. That's, well, here, let me write that. That is f prime of x. If we want to know what f prime of 3 is, what do we need to do? Yeah, so f prime of 3 is going to be 2 times, or I'm sorry, 3 times 3 squared, which is 27. All right, so this means that the slope of, actually, I should put my box around this whole thing. Why, why would I put the box around the whole thing rather than just the 27? It's a good idea, first of all, to write your answer like this. Um, in fact, not just a good idea, but it's required to write your answer like this. Uh, if you're trying to find f prime of 3, write f prime of 3 equals something. But put a box around the whole thing because this equation right here gives the full answer. It tells us what the 27 is. All right? it, it would be the equivalent to um, answering a question in uh, full sentences. So um, if, I, if you're asked to answer a question in full sentences and I say, did you eat breakfast this morning? You wouldn't just say yes. That's not a complete sentence. You would say, yes, I ate breakfast this morning. Okay? That, that's, this is kind of the mathematical equivalent equivalent of that. Um, you've got the full idea of the answer here. Okay, now, let's use that other definition. Uh, most of you, I think, wrote it down, but I'll write it here. So we've got the limit as x approaches c. Um, 
let me do this, f prime of c equals limit as x approaches c of f of what? minus f of c over x minus c. Okay, so for this particular problem, we want to know what f prime of 3 is. So we're going to take the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x, which is what? x cubed minus f of 3, which is 27 over x minus 3. Now, if we try direct substitution here, we're going to get 27 minus 27 on top and 3 minus 3 on the bottom, so we have 0 over 0. So what can I do here? Factor. You guys remember how to factor a difference of perfect cubes? Yes. Cool. It's a good thing to remember how to do. Um, so the x cubed minus 27 is going to factor and look like what? Okay, and so since I know that x is not actually going to equal 3, which is when this denominator would equal 0, uh, it's just approaching 3, what can I do here? I can cancel. The x minus 3 is cancel. And so what we really have then is that f prime of 3 is going to equal the limit as x approaches 3 of that expression that's left, x squared plus 3x plus 9. Now can I use direct substitution? Yeah. Um, there, we don't have any problems here with indeterminate forms, so we put 3 in for x. Uh, we get 3 squared here is 9. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 9. 9 plus 9 plus 9 is 27. So we get the same answer both ways. Now, this way is actually probably a little bit less work for this particular problem, right? Um, not a lot less work, but a little bit less work. Here we had to expand a binomial uh, to the third power um, and then cancel stuff out and then evaluate a limit. Here we had to factor a difference of cubes. Um, that may have been a, a tricky thing for some of you. Um, the, the thing I want to point out here is either way gives us the same answer. Either way gives us the correct answer. So you can kind of choose which way you want to do it. What most people do is just pick one method and stick with that method. And if, if you're going to be one of those people, pick this one. Okay, because this one is going to be uh, more useful in more situations. Um, if you are one of those people that you like to be as efficient as possible and you don't mind using a couple of different methods, then this is a good one to use when you want to find the derivative at a point. Because when you're finding the derivative at a point, this is just a little bit less work. It's not as useful, though, if we want to find the derivative as a function.